I recently fell in love with lava, and it all started when I heard this story. It was the summer of 1831. Off the coast of Sicily, sailors noticed bubbling, sulfurous fumes, dead fish, and then, all of a sudden, there was a tiny rocky island where none had been before. It had appeared right in the middle of an important Mediterranean shipping lane, so four nations sent ships to claim it. Britain, Spain, France, the Kingdom of Two Sicilies, they all wanted it for a military outpost. This was a real diplomatic standoff until the island disappeared. It had sunk beneath the waves, and so everyone agreed to just forget about it. But one man didn't forget. This is Charles Lyell, probably the greatest geologist of that time. You might say he was in love with lava. Lyell knew that this ghost island was the top of an underwater volcano. It was built with globs of cooled lava, and then the sea eroded those globs away. Lyell said, whoa, everyone, look at this. This is evidence of my favorite theory that the Earth has been making and remaking itself for a long time. And here you can see that lava is one of the things that is constantly rebuilding our world. Thinking about lava in those terms really makes me want to see it in action. And that doesn't count. Unfortunately, most real volcanoes are pretty far away from where I live. They're in the so-called Ring of Fire around the Pacific, well beyond the reach of my NPR travel budget. I didn't think I'd ever get to see real lava until I heard about these two guys in upstate New York who were so infatuated with the stuff, they built their own personal volcano. So I packed my lunch and I gave my boss the slip. Wrote myself this theme song going on a field trip, yeah. These are the two men behind the Syracuse University Lava Project. Bob is a sculptor. Jeff is a geologist. They both want to make lava, but for very different reasons. Bob creates sculptures that mimic nature, like this big old sand dune. When Bob looked at lava, when he saw the things that lava has made, he decided to make lava himself. But first he needed to reach the rock melting temperatures that exist beneath the Earth's crust, where lava forms. So we got this old bronze furnace, which used to melt metal for statues, and souped it up so it could reach 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. This has been my mistress for the last three and a half years. I know everything about her, and it's, it's this weird relationship I have with this machine. He takes basaltic gravel, that's the stuff that a lot of Earth's crust is made of, and adds it a little at a time. If he adds it all at once, the furnace won't be able to keep up. Put another 50 pounds in and see what it does. Like two o'clock, I'll check it again. 1.30 or two. So, okay. The other half of the team is Jeff Carson. He sees this same lava like Lyle once did, as the stuff that helped build the world. Where tectonic plates slide apart, lava burbles up and new crust forms. Where plates collide, volcanoes grow, and islands rise out of the sea. It's hard to study these processes. They're in remote locations, they're dangerous, and they're unpredictable. No one gets an engraved in, uh, invitation to come to a lava flow. You don't know exactly when it's going to happen or uh, if it's going to behave in a very quiescent or explosive fashion. It would be so nice to have a safe, reliable volcano you could just keep in the lab. So when Bob came to Jeff a couple of years ago and said, do you want to help me make lava? Jeff said yes. And the time it took him to get back to his office, uh, I think I'd written two or three pages of ideas of scientific experiments, educational opportunities, just stuff I wanted to do. I mean, I was completely uh, sucked into this instantaneously. It's taken hundreds of tries to perfect this process, and now I get to see their latest batch. This is my first date with lava, so I'm going to get dressed up. This may be the last time you ever see my eyebrows. So that happens get it, all of the get time. It. Like usually I put my hair back because uh -huh. I'll periodically like dip my head in a really hot spot and I'll notice a little a poof and sizzle. All um, right. So here we are, the lid's on. Lid's I can on. already feel like it's pretty warm. It's about to get a lot hotter as soon okay. as I open the lid. When the lid comes off, a wall of heat just hits you. I could feel the sweat evaporate off my face. My heart rate shot up. Sometimes it like 
viciously convex where like if you could you know, heat up chili just before it starts to boil, it's kind of like that. Over the past two days, Bob has been adding more and more basalt, and now the furnace contains 800 pounds of molten rock. All right, we're ready to roll here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Temperature's about 1,035 degrees as it's poured out. And it's probably going to lose at least 100 degrees as it just comes down through the metal trough here. Okay, what do you got right there? Uh, see if it'll blow out for us. Oh, there we go. Just for you, Jenny. Where are you? <laughs> Now, Jeff and other geologists can create controlled experiments with active lava flows. Different slopes, different temperatures, different flow rates, all the different sort of parameters that can affect the way lava behaves and the way a lava flow looks when it finally solidifies. <laughs> and Bob can create his art. And every time it comes out, I still think, wow, it's lava. It's, That's it's crazy. Lava. Yeah. And it has all the structures of real lava. Pele seaweed, the paper-thin edges of bubbles named after the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. Pele's hair. It just got cool really fast after they poured it. I don't know, it's Pele's tears or Pele's booger or whatever. I don't know what that is, you know? And just like a real lava flow, this one retains a lot of heat. This won't be cool enough to really touch until tomorrow sometime which gave me an idea. Well, the sun is sinking low and a basking in the glow while that warm lava flow toasts my marsh mallow. The fresh lava pour makes my weary heart sore cause I know that it's time to make love. Really good.